Welcome to episode number 133 of Paint a Beautiful Picture. Intending to notice. My challenge question for you today is, do I notice what's going around me? Sometimes they talk about people who are clueless. At various times, all of us are. Many of us are preoccupied and we have a million things to take care of and think about and we can get pretty clueless. We are not really noticing what in the world is happening around us. And as a parent, not only can that be dangerous, it can actually be terminal. Not just with little children, but even with teenagers and older kids. And so this one is pretty near and dear to my heart. What are, the, what are you noticing and what is keeping you from noticing? You need to intentionally notice what in the world is going on with your kids. All right, so I'm going to start with a couple of problems that cause people to, you know, struggle with this one. And the first one is self-absorption. Some people are all about themselves. How do I look? How, you know, how am I doing? How, how is my life? And they're not really looking at anyone else's life or anyone else's concerns. They're just all self-absorbed. Insecure people tend to be incredibly self-absorbed and immature people tend to be very self-absorbed. So you need to look at that and make that assessment really honestly. On a scale of 1 to 10, you know, how self-absorbed am I? Am I earnestly concerned about other people? Am I actively involved in other people's lives? Or am I pretty much it's all about me? Then you have people who are so busy people-pleasing. They are others-oriented, but not in a healthy way because they're all worried about what other people think about them. They're not living their own life except based on what they think are cues about how they're doing is other people think about them. That's not really going to do anything either because you're not going to actively notice what needs to get addressed because again, still, this is all about you and it's about how other people think about you or how much you're impressing other people or how other people perceive of you. Both of those are really very out of balance and in order to notice other people, you do have to have a level of balance. You need to be concerned with your own life. You need to take care of yourself. You need to think about what is good or best for you. You do. That's legit. Although not 24-7. You need to think about others around you. You need to, need to notice how they're doing. You need to notice what they might need from you. But not 24-7. You do have to have a certain amount of balance. With children, especially little ones, from the time they're born until they're five or six years old, there's not going to be much balance in your life. I'm going to say in your waking hours, a good 80 to 90% of everything you have is going to be directed toward caring for them and meeting their needs. You're not going to get a lot of time to yourself. And if you're foolishly taking it and stealing it from your children, you're going to suffer for that. And so are your children for the rest of their lives. You've got to pour yourself into those developmental years. And this is when you need to notice the most. I have a friend who had a deaf child. They didn't realize until this child was around six months old that their child was deaf. The reason why is because of the vibration of things or the movement of things, their child would turn their head and respond appropriately if they came into a room. So they believed the child was responding to the sound of their voice, but the ch child was responding to other cues. It took a while to notice that this child was deaf. There's no judgment or criticism here. Some parents don't notice till their child's 19 or 20 months old. But there are a lot of things we might miss if we're not busy intentionally noticing them. Some children have autism. Their parents don't find out till they're four or five. I have a, a really sweet girl that I've known for quite a long time. She did not realize until her son was four years old that there was a problem. She had not been around a lot of little kids and she just didn't understand that her child was not responding normally. He didn't speak any at four years old. She thought he was just a shy and a quiet kid. Actually, he had quite a number of severe developmental disabilities that needed to be addressed. And it wasn't that she wasn't noticing. It was that she was undereducated and she didn't know what normal stuff was. So you need to notice. And if you think there's anything maybe sort of kind of not quite right, Try to get your hands on some information, even if it is a, is a simple thing like taking your child to a good pediatrician or a good child counselor and letting them make an assessment and say, 
Yeah, there are a few things that aren't quite right. Or no, your child's perfectly normal, maybe a little developmentally delayed, but nothing's really going on. You need to notice things about your child. I'm going to acknowledge to you that the more children you have, the more difficult it becomes to really notice something significant in one of your children. And this is, again, where you rely on people like your parents or your mate's parents or even your mate who goes to work every day and comes home and then, you know, mom, dad, if you're the working parent and you come home and you're like, wow, you know, Janie seems a little bit off lately. Billy's not quite been himself. Really? I didn't notice. Well, let's look into this. Yeah, both of you need to be paying attention and other people in the world that love them need to be paying attention. And all of you need to notice if something isn't quite right. With a little kid, you might see things like their appetite changes. They don't eat anymore or they're barely eating or they want to eat radically different things all of a sudden or they're throwing up sometimes. They have diarrhea. They're severely constipated. Those are all often physical symptoms of something emotional that's going on. And as well, they can, they can actually have something physical happening. But my point being that these are things that you need to notice. Then, of course, there are emotionally things, emotional things. You have a four-year-old. They've never pitched a fit before, and suddenly they're starting to pitch a fit. Or they've always been really cooperative, and suddenly they're just intractable. They're digging in their heels, and it's like, no, I'm not going to do it. Like, where in the world did this behavior come from? So you don't just notice that there's a change, but you try to get to the root of what in the world, because you're trying to notice what's happening with your child's inner workings and why in the world is this what they're doing now. That becomes a very big deal as they get older and they're in school. You, a child may not come right out and tell you that they're being bullied, whether by a friend or, heaven help us all, by a teacher or someone else. They might not tell you that they're being molested or abused or someone is harming them. They probably don't have the language. You need to notice, though, what's going on with them. Suddenly they're not eating. Suddenly they're, they have a stomach ache every single day. They have a bad headache and they don't want to go to school. Something's up. Notice changes and try to get to what's going on and address those things. It's huge in preteens and teenagers and it's challenging. They're going through all these hormonal changes. You're not quite sure what's just moodiness or being difficult or, oh, they're just a teenager now, and what's really serious. I acknowledge that to you. I want you to know this. So in case you have missed some cues or something dreadful has happened, I'm not putting guilt on you in any way. I really have compassion for the fact that there are things we do not notice. But what I'm saying to you as a parent who's under my tutelage and who has an opportunity maybe to do this a little differently, please notice when your preteen or your teen is having a very difficult time. Sometimes if you don't notice, they will go into a really deep de depression or desperation time period. They could even end up committing suicide, running away, getting on drugs, really getting into legal trouble because they're with the wrong people. You need to be noticing what's going on in their world and especially notice behavioral changes. Sometimes they're really extreme. It's not so hard to see. Sometimes they're kind of minor and you might miss it for a little while and all of a sudden go, how did I miss that? Okay. The main thing is, as I shared one, uh, yesterday on episode 132, when you're loving each and every kid in your house, and I said, sometimes you might actually need to keep notes. No joke, especially if you have a big family. I don't think that's necessarily a problem. I think maybe once a month it might be a wise idea to write a summary about how your child's doing. So suddenly your child doesn't have the same friends and they're no longer happy-go-lucky and they're not really eating well anymore and you have these notes and you go back, you know, wow, like two or three months this has been going on, okay? Something's really not quite right because in today's very busy world, we have so much to take care of and keep track of it might be hard to know when that really started. And so doing a monthly summary, having a really good idea of significant things that go in your child's life, that might be a great deal of help. In all this intentional noticing what's going on with your child, that's just the beginning. Because once you notice things happening, then you have to address them. 
so it might require a trip to the doctor if it seems like it's more physical than any other thing. I want to say this to you, though, because a lot of people misunderstand this area of development. Pre-teens, also known as prepubescent youth. So a girl somewhere between the ages of 9 and 12, and a boy somewhere between the ages of 10 and 14. Prior to this growth spurt where they suddenly grow 4 to 8 inches taller, they get chubby because their body knows what's coming. Hormonally, it grabs onto calories and gives them a little extra boost metabolically so when they grow taller, they've got something to grow with. Don't get on any kid's back because they're gaining weight in that prepubescent time. If they've always been a really skinny kid and suddenly they put on 20 or 30 pounds, you, I want you to understand developmentally, you don't need to worry. Now, a kid who's 18 years old who puts on 40 or 50 pounds in a short period of time, then you better start being concerned. You better take her to the doctor and get her thyroid checked. You better find out if she has a di an eating disorder because bulimics often gain a good bit of weight because of how much they're eating, but then they have all these other difficulties. When you see your child suddenly lose a massive amount of weight, but nothing's going on, again, you might need to get them checked for diabetes. You might find out if they're anorexic or if somewhere they have a body image issue. There are a number of things, but all of these things happen because you're noticing what's going on with your child. I want you to understand, all of us want to be noticed. <laughs> you get your hair cut. You come home and nobody notices. It's a brand new haircut and it looks awesome and nobody says, wow, you look great. Your mate doesn't go, man, that's an awesome haircut. Like it looks so good on you. That's really attractive. I love it. Your best friend doesn't say a word. It's a bummer. You go to all this trouble to put on your makeup and get your nails done because you're going to go to a party and not a single person notices. Yeah, it is a bummer. We all understand that. And that's a short term thing that we need to be noticed. I want you to know your children, they need to be noticed. They need to be noticed when they do it right. We miss that one a lot as parents. We're so busy focusing on, I can't believe you did this and what were you thinking? And we focus so much on the wrong, we can miss focusing on the right. You need to notice when your child does it right. You need to notice when your child is struggling. You need to notice when their emotional state has changed. You need to notice what's going on with their physical body. You need to notice what's happening with their friends. And especially you need to notice what's happening with their heart. I'm going to leave you with this illustration because I'm going to admit to you an area where I did not do very well. When my kids were in their early teens to mid-teens, my one son had a problem. I'm not going to tell you what that problem was because it's not the point. I was dating a guy and then in a relationship with guy and I was pretty busy with this guy. I really was. I was more self-absorbed or other absorbed than I was with noticing what was going on with my child. Uh, it, this actually went on for about two and a half years. I want you to know that. I'm not on your case like you need to do it this and I was expert at it. No. I'm saying to you out of genuine concern and legitimacy I didn't notice, and this is a really, really detrimental behavior in one of my son's lives. When I finally did notice it had gone on so long, it was very challenging to deal with it and to handle it. He had already been doing it for such a long time. It was kind of entrenched as part of his life at that point, and it was tough to get him to change. If I had been paying more attention if I had intentionally been noticing things, it could have gone differently. We dealt with it, but I'm telling you, it was a pretty costly lesson for me and for my son. So I want to encourage you today, notice your child. Every one of them knows what they're doing. Notice what they're not doing. Notice how they're feeling. Notice what's going on in their general world. And if there's something they're not doing very well with, intervene. Take it as an opportunity to help your child learn and develop and grow more healthy under your care. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with me today. I will look forward to seeing you again soon. 
You may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website. Additionally, you may watch me on Rumble, and you may also listen to a podcast on Buzzsprout or Spreaker, all under the name Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You may subscribe, and if you are interested in receiving notifications, please hit the notifications button.